Good morning, good morning. Getting ready for the game tonight? Oh, yeah, it's going to be great. I was also thinking of the Warriors, the Cavalier game. Um, <laughs> we didn't do so well the other day. We spent all of our energy pitching a no-hitter against the Mets. Anyway, today the House uh, will vote on the Republicans' defense appropriations bill, recognizing that our first responsibility to the American people is to protect and defend them. House Democrats stand for a strong national defense. That's why we support lifting the sequestration and fully funding the president's defense budget. The uh, Republican defense appropriation is, bill is bad budgeting and harmful to military planning, perpetuating uncertainty and instability uh, for the future. As Defense Secretary Ash Carter has said, Republicans the Republicans' approach is clearly a road to nowhere. Managerially unsound, he said, and unfairly dispiriting our forces, our force. House Democrats' sustaining of the president's veto combined with Senate Democrats' refusal to allow Republicans' unacceptable destructive appropriations bills to come to the floor is the key to unlocking the sequester. It's my hope that we can bring, as we go forward, and more quickly than than just waiting until we get through all the appropriations bills. The Republicans will see uh, that it's important to come to the table for us to work together in a bipartisan way, in a fiscally responsible way, uh, to have a budget that invests in our future. As you know, today we'll begin the process to take up bills related to trade. Those votes will proceed in the context of really excellent and impassioned works on people on all sides uh, of the debate. Great work, of course, by the president and his team uh, to translate our shared values into a trade agreement. Great passion and intellect on the part of those who've raised questions uh, about how to improve uh, the trade agreement. I commend our friends and the environmental group, the groups, the labor communities, people of faith on their efforts to improve TPA and then therefore TPP. I'm pleased to have worked with uh, Speaker Boehner to pay the fix the pay for in the TAA, uh, we still have one concern, which we have always had, which is that public employees are not included in the TAA. Uh, when we had the majority in 2009, the bill that passed had public employees in. Uh, in 2011, when we still there was a Republican Senate, the um, uh, we. It became the Republican Congress. It, it became uh, they were taken out. We would hope that we could include them in that, and that's one piece of unfinished business that we are still working on, and still hopeful that we can make that change. Uh, and then we would proceed today, as we have discussed, to take up the AGOA bill, which is the preference bill plus the Africa trade, including the Africa trade, and that contains the uh, uh, the fix to substitute a, another form of funding for the Medicare cut. Uh, then we'll take up the rules so that we can go to the floor tomorrow to discuss these two bills. Hopefully, in the meantime, we can get the um, public employees, the public agency workers, once again back into the mix of those who get trade adjustment assistance if their communities or their jobs are lost, not only by trade, but by outsourcing, outsourcing, and that's another offshoring uh, jobs is another way that uh, workers in our country are affected and therefore should have trade assistance. Any questions? Oh, I'm not finished. I want to say one more thing. <laughs> the one more thing, and this is, I, I just want to make this point because people have asked, you've cooperated with the speaker, and we have, and, and the offset was... We had to work on it for a while to find one that was acceptable and that was not being used by somebody else for something else. Uh, but what I'm concerned about in all of this is that we watched as the Senate had uh, the debate on uh, trade promotion authority. They had the ability to have amendments, discussion, debate, some rejected, some accepted, and then the bill came to the House, where we had no opportunity, no opportunity uh, to have any debate or make any amendments. It was fast-tracking, the fast track. And it gave new meaning to the term lower house. Why is it that they, and the Senate could have amendments, 
but we in the House could not bring forth initiatives. Many of our members had ideas that they thought would improve TPA, that they at least wanted aired, to hear our, have our trade partners understand uh, some of the concerns and priorities that members of Congress have. I think whatever view people have of TA or TPA, they, the door is open for uh, supporting a TPP if it meets uh, uh, some of the concerns uh, that members have, and we were deprived of that opportunity. So I don't know how that formulation comes about where the Senate has ability to amend and we don't. And I also uh, object to the fact or, or just observe that in the customs bill, and it'll be a GOA, that's today, the rule, that's today, tomorrow, the order that I understand from the speaker is TAA and then TPA, according to the rule, and then we do the customs bill. But as you may have seen or you may have written, there are uh, provisions in the customs bill that do amend the TPA, should, they, could the, should the customs bill become law. For example, that there can be no discussion addressing or recognizing climate change. I mean, to me, that is, how can you separate in this day and age climate and um, commerce? Impossible. Uh, others that relate to visas, d just different things to accommodate uh, the uh, concerns of some of their members by, ad uh, by amending that bill. And who knows where that bill is going, but nonetheless uh, making it harder for Democrats to support that bill. So it, I think that lesson learned here would be in the future, let's have parity in terms of the ability to debate an issue, uh, have a fair d discussion, vote it up or down, but have uh, raised questions that are important for the final bill, which would be the TPP when it comes up. Any questions? Madam Leader. Yes, sir. <laughs> you were, did I recognize you already? Thank you. If you're concerned uh, about uh, uh, public uh, public sector employees is addressed, will you vote for the trade bill? Well, uh, when we when we see what, what comes for the trade bill, or are you talking about TAA? Pardon me, for the fast track. Well, wait, uh, uh, the, the, the public employees piece is a piece of the TAA. We'll just see how that goes. I'm asking you, if it's addressed, would you be willing then to vote? I will, I will be making my statement in full, probably on the floor of the House tomorrow. Yes, sir. Do you believe that the process that Boehner is proceeding with kind of addresses your concerns on the Medicare pay for Because some of your members, as you're probably well aware, do not believe that it addresses that. I do. I think it does. Uh, and I, I think it's... Uh, uh, the pay. My, our members do not want any cuts in Medicare. We have never supported cuts in there. Co co contrary to misrepresentations on part of the Republicans over and over again, you cut money out of Medicare to pay for the Affordable Care Act. It was completely not true. That money was spent, the savings were spent on making Medicare stronger and closing the donut hole, uh, free annual checkups, those kinds of things. So it was uh, savings in some areas to support improvements in others. They, in turn, in their budget, did take $800 billion out of the Medicare system to give tax cuts to the wealthiest people in our country. It's a stunning thing how the, all roads seem to lead to the wealthiest people in our country. Uh, we talk about that every week, practically. So uh, when it comes to the Republicans. So there was no way, based on substance, that our members would be supporting a cut in Medicare. Uh, the uh, substitute that we have is uh, a good one. It's in the AGOA bill, and the Medicare cuts are in the rule, and that's where their members will have to uh, vote for that in order to move the process forward, which is already preempted by the passage today of the AGOA bill. Madam, Madam Leader, Leader the, I, the Democrats, I'm, I'm sorry, the, the Republican leadership has given enormous power to the Democrats by saying that passage of trade promotion authority is dependent on passage of trade adjustment assistance before. Yeah. Will Democrats take advantage of that and bring down trade adjustment assistance to bring down trade promotion authority? I don't know that, I think that was an agreement in the Senate, but as, no, the, bill, the, as the bill came over to the House, the House rules determine that if a bill comes over that way, that's how it has to leave. The failure of one part of it, either 
uh, TPA, if that fails, there's no TAA. Right. Uh, and TAA is a program that exists not just, as I said, for the, this trade bill, but for other offshoring and all the rest of that. So it either one, if either of them fails, then um, then the other part of it fails, yeah. But <laughs> would you think take that advantage that empowered, of that? Uh, well, it's empowered us to try to get a better TAA and get a better uh, funding uh, for it. Um, but, but I have you know, tried to weigh the equities on both sides of this as we go forward. I don't know uh, that that would be the case. You're right, it does empower in that regard. I'd like to see the TPA rise or fall on its own, but yes, that opportunity does exist. Madam Leader, on, on Iraq, uh, what's your take on the President's plan to send more military advisors to the country, and how do you feel about the situation on the ground as a whole? Well, I think that uh, the President has the authority to do what he has done. Uh, I think the Iraqis have to fight their own fight, and I think it all points out the need for us to do an AUM. We have to do a, an authorization for the use of military force. Uh, we've talked about that before. There were, uh, almost a year ago, we were asking the, say by July or August, we were asking the speaker to help have us bring up a bill in July, say, no, wait till September. September, he said, we're not until January. Then he said, we have to wait to see what the president sends down. The president sent down an AUMF for us to act upon. You change whatever you want in terms of scope. What, what is the authority that it gives the president? Timeline, three years in the president's bill. Geography, unlimited in the president's bill. But those are three areas in terms of uh, how force would be used there, whether it's, uh, and, and then when the president did that, then nothing happened. And so we still continue to say, as we go forward, that we need to have an authorization of the use of military force. My understanding is that the Republicans don't think that this gives the president as much power, unlimited almost, that they would like to give the president. And on the, on the other side of the coin, there's what's, you know, we would like to have a, a clarification in terms of scope and maybe uh, geography. Let me say we. I mean, among us, there are those who have different views, including Mr. McGovern, who wants us out, who wants us out of Iraq. So there's a range of views on the subject. But it's no use talking about day to day. We have to talk about the authority. And that's what you're asking about it, but we don't discuss it on the floor of the House. We should. Um, just a, a quick change here to the drought over in uh, California. Uh, now, we've been hearing from the Democrats this is a climate change issue, and we should be focusing on that as well as some, some water storage. Uh, however, uh, Devin Nunes has already said that if you have one more drought year, like the two previous ones, that even would be larger areas, such as, or larger populated areas like San Francisco, as well as Los Angeles, are not going to have any more water left to rely on, like say over in the Colorado River, um, over in Owens, and so on and so forth. Yeah. People are watering their lawns at like midnight at this point because they're trying to use their 25%. Can you um, discuss this a bit? Well, I think the there certainly is a relationship between climate and uh, weather conditions, uh, uh, climate conditions uh, in, the, in the world. However, the reason we have a drought in California is because we don't have enough rainfall, and that's a, a, a cyclical phenomenon. Our reservoirs, our best reservoirs, are snowpack. So we don't have snow in the winter. We don't have water for the rest of the year, no matter how much we... My husband told me it was raining in San Francisco when he left there yesterday. It was the best news of all. But you only make up so much if you don't have your reservoir, which is the... So we, we don't have a meeting of our California Democrats that we're not talking about all of these, how you conserve, how uh, the aquifers, the what's the future of uh, desalinization, is it expensive, does it use too much energy, all of that. And every time we get close on that, it rains and then people put it aside. But I think conservation, as the governor has called for, is really a very important tool for us to use. Thus far, I don't mean thus far, but before he made his, his um, 
uh, announcements, it was an underutilized resource. But what about the building of dams? Uh, and the other side said that dams hadn't been built in a number of years. Yeah, well, they're, they're, uh, the, every issue that you bring up has to be subjected to an environment. What what does it really add, and what does it subtract? As I said, on on desalinization, is it does use more energy than it is worth to get the amount of water that would yield less task to get better technology to get the job done. Uh, so it's not a question of dams or not. It's a question of we need more rain, we need more snow, we need to conserve more, and we have to subject every option of storage, conservation, as I said, uh, desalinization, uh, and storage in many <coughs> versions, storage, aquifers, all of that uh, uh, at our disposal. But it is, it, it is um, uh, drastic. And I don't know if people are watering at night so nobody sees them watering or that they use less water or whatever it is. I know some people are painting their lawns green. Um, well, apparently Los Angeles and people in Southern California are able to keep their lawns green while their people are uh, in more rural areas having brown lawns. And yeah. there's a big difference in, in and that's And that is something that is being, uh, uh, shall we say, uh, recognized in the press and, and raised uh, as an issue. Uh, so it, it's it, it's a big, fundamental, basic problem for us. Water. The story of the West and fu wars over water is the story of the West. And now, in terms of you know, you're talking about other areas that are effective, if we effective, we don't have water. Uh, the whole issue of how much water farmers use, how much does it take to grow, to to eat a hamburger, or to eat a cup of almonds, or to have alfalfa in your sandwich or rice on your plate. All these discussions, because many of what I things that I just mentioned require a great deal of water. So we have to some, some choices to make. We should make them scientifically as to what really works and gets the job done. Madam Leader, I'm uh, curious about your your yeah, thoughts. Just, this oh, gentleman here. Um, I wanted to ask you about the OPM hack. Uh, the administration yeah. has been reluctantly uh, reluctant to blame China publicly, but the New York Times writes this morning that in a classified setting, they're telling members of Congress that this is clearly China. And um, I wanted to know, how do you think that the administration should respond if the state actor is found responsible for it? Well, we will have a, a, a briefing on this, I think, the beginning of next week. It's next week. I believe it is the beginning of the next week uh, from the administration to see in a classified setting what is really there and what, what conforms to what we see in the press or not, but also to go beyond that. So as a member of the game that you haven't done any brief on this yet? Or? Not yet. Well, we're going to be brief next week. Yes, sir. Madam Leader, you, uh, back on trade, you talked about it being a passionate discussion, and I would venture to say... An intellectual. <laughs> I would venture to say that it was much more passionate, probably, on, among your Democratic uh, caucus. <coughs> what have you heard in, in some of the meetings uh, that, you know, shows that passion, reveals that passion? Oh, we don't discuss what goes on in our meetings. Come on. You're probably getting tweets about them as we are speaking in the meeting. <laughs> so is it something you want to confirm or do you want me to deny? Uh, no, I mean, it, it, we have, I am so proud of the House Democratic Caucus. Just watch the debate on the floor on any given day, on any given subject, and you will see intellect, knowledge, wisdom, judgment. You will see just an absolute demonstration of why people support what, their vision and they know what they're talking about. Same thing in the caucus. When people stand up, it's about what they know, uh, how, how strategic they're thinking about it, and how they can persuade each other uh, to share their view. Quickly, I just, I, I, this upcoming uh, health care uh, yeah. case in the Supreme Court, I was just curious if you wanted to prognosticate for us. Mm -hmm. But also, there seems to be these words of a super secret GOP plan <coughs> that would come forward to perhaps put back those subsidies. I, presumably, I think they need your help for 218 on something like that. Have you heard anything like that from them? Would they I be aware of a super secret Republican <laughs> plan? <laughs> No, I'd be the last person you should ask about overtures that. Overtures so far about what would occur? <laughs> I'm, I believe that, again, the court will rule in favor of the Affordable Care Act. Uh, the whole uh, predicate, predicate of the Affordable Care Act was that it would cost X amount of dollars. Uh, CB, everything we do has to be scored by CBO. The CBO score was a score for state exchanges and the federal exchange for those states who didn't have 
uh, for those people in states who didn't have exchanges. So the whole fundamental basis of the bill was state exchanges and federal exchanges. It would only take a, a bill that uh, uh, added two words, or subtracted four words, uh, to, uh, comp to change all of that. I don't think the court should have even taken this up. So I feel pretty confident, uh, as I was before, as you may recall, uh, that the court would rule in favor of the Affordable Care Act. Yes, sir. Democrats have, have voted in the past for this sequestration extension on Medicare in, in some budget deal votes. Why? Could you talk about why this particular vote would be so troublesome for Democrats on the Medicare pay for and why you needed to cross your eyes, cross your T's and dot your eyes on the procedure? For many reasons. For many reasons. And it hasn't been on a number of occasions. It was in, in the context of a budget agreement to go forward. But um, generally speaking, I don't think that members think that Medicare funds should be used to underwrite trade. Okay. Do you believe TA will oh, pass? Wait, 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 you had a question? Right. I, I wanted to ask, um, you mentioned the issue of the Public Sector Employees yeah. Union. Has Speaker Boehner uh, indicated... Union, public employees, yeah. Has Speaker Boehner indicated that he will address that, and is that necessary in order for TAA and TPA to pass? I have brought this issue up with the Speaker on a number of occasions, a number of times, even within the same occasion. Uh, I don't... Uh, I was not given any reason to be <coughs> hopeful that it would he would initiate anything. So we were trying to go to where some of the problem might be in the Senate to try to convince some of the people who put this in, who left this out in the first place. So we're working it, in other words, not, we're working it. Uh, but um, um, we'll see what happens probably later in the day. We have to vote on it tomorrow, so uh, if they go forward with the rule. At well, this it? point, well, he said when he says thank you, he's my boss. <laughs> <laughs> Did you see you match these guys? Oh, summer is here. <laughs> it's Deer Sucker Day. Are you going to the ball game tonight? Oh, yeah. I don't know what happens at 9 o'clock. It's 9 o'clock, it's going to be Warriors and Cavaliers. Mm -hmm. I get you in the suite. Yeah. What's wrong with Steph Curry's uh, shooting? Yeah, I'm better. <laughs> it's returning. It's returning. I was there Sunday, and I was very excited. Two good teams. Two great teams. Bye bye. <laughs>